Good morning to everyone. Uh, it seems that today is my time to present our speaker. It's Anna Crema. I hope all of you already know her. She's working with us for past four months, five more or less. Uh, but before she came here, she was working um, in other areas. And today, Anna will talk a little bit of what she did in her PhD before coming to work with us as a postdoc. Uh, so, Anna, please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Elena, and good morning to everyone. I am Anna Paula Safinheider Crema, and today I'm going to present an abstract of my thesis work developed in Brazil and Italy. The title of my work is Degradation of Emergent Contaminants Applying No Thermoplasma in Hybrid System. I am Brazilian and I came from Brazil, from south of Brazil, from Florianópolis, which is an island located in south of Brazil. I went to Florianópolis to study chemistry at Federal University of Santa Catarina. This university is the ninth most prestigious university of Latin America. In there, I got an undergraduate master in PhD degree in chemistry with emphasis in physical chemistry. And since my undergraduation, I've been working in the research group called Organic Physical Chemistry, Interface Phenomena and Plasma Applied to Chemical Process under the supervision of Professor Bakker. And also since my undergraduation, I've been working with themes regarding to water treatment uh, applying no thermoplasma. As you know, plasma is the fourth distinct state of the matter, is a partially or fully ionized gas composed by photons, high energy accelerated electrons, radicals, excited and neutral molecules, UV radiation, etc. The plasma can be divided in two groups, thermoplasma and no thermoplasma. And the difference between them is the electron temperature. In thermoplasma, the electron temperature is the same of the other components. While in no thermoplasma, there is a significant difference between the electron temperature and the other components. And we can observe the plasma phenomena in the natural. An example of thermoplasma is the solar surface, and the no thermoplasma is the aurora boreal. Uh, no thermoplasma is a kind of advanced uh, oxidation process. And this process are characterized by the formation of the oxidizing species in the reaction, for example, the hydroxy radical. The hydroxy radical is the main species formed in this kind of process because high oxidation potential, 2.85 volts, capable to degrade uh, the most organic compounds. The, uh, the advanced oxidation process are considered uh, as a green method because it's not necessary to edit any chemical to, to the application. Once the, the main uh, reactional environment produces the species necessary to, to the treatment, for example. And we can generate uh, no, uh, plasma in laboratory from, from different ways. Usually we use a high el electrical discharge. To form thermoplasma, we need a high voltage and a high current, more than one ampere. And to form uh, no thermoplasma, we need a high voltage, but a low current, less than one ampere. And the mechanism that governs the electrical discharge is the thousand mechanism. The thousand mechanism is uh, divided in three coefficients, alpha, gamma, and beta. The alpha coefficient is related with the first ionization that occur when the electron with high energy is accelerated from the cathode until the anode ionizes the neutral molecule. And the second uh, the coefficient is regarding to the secondary electron emissions. When the ion, uh, cationic ions uh, percourse the opposite direction, direction of the electron from the anode until the cathode, causing the secondary electron emissions. And finally, the beta coefficient is regarding to the electron abstraction from the discharge. And this is a characteristic of the electronegative gases. And uh, as uh, the plasma is a, a ionized gas, the most important parameter is the working gas. In this work, I use 
uh, for different working gas, uh, oxygen, ar uh, nitrogen, argon, and air to form no thermoplasm. When we use oxygen uh, uh, to form no thermoplasma, the species formed is the ozone. In nitrogen no thermoplasma, the oxygen nitric is the precursor to four others reactive nitrogen species as nitrite, nitrate, peroxynitrite, etc. And when you use argon to form no thermoplasma, the cationic argon is the most important uh, species formed because uh, responsible for there is responsible for the secondary electric emissions, guaranteed to argon a better sustainability discharge. And when you use air as working gas, we have a mixture of the, all these species. However, when you form no thermoplasma on the water surface, surface, the most important species formed is the hydroxy radical. And the formation of the hydroxy radical occurs when the electrons with high energy uh, shocks with the water surface, generating the radicals hydroxy and hydrogen. Uh, these species can be uh, created in the reaction environment, can be classified in two and uh, three ensembles, uh, the progenitor species, the primary and the secondary. The progenitor species uh, are, is really, uh, are the working gas that are used for no thermoplasma in the water vapor. The species will react with the electrons of high energy to form the primary species that are basically the radicals. The primary species, uh, they have a high oxidation potential, but a short lifetime. So they react in between to form the secondary species. The secondary species, they have a, a slow oxidation potential when compared to the primary, but they have a, a better lifetime, keeping contact with the target molecule for more time. And these species are distributed in the reaction environment in three regions, in the gas interface and liquid phase. In the gas phase, we have, uh, we have uh, the progenitor species, and the interface, we have the um, primary and the secondary species. And these species formed in the interface can migrate to the liquid phase, start the chemical reactions. And finally, in the liquid phase, we have the primary and the secondary species. Uh, the plasma applications, uh, I would say that we can apply plasma to, to everything, basically. But here's some examples. We can apply plasma in environment treatment, for example, to treat the water, volatile organic compounds, to conversion of greenhouse gases as CO2, in surface treatment, surface functionalization, in plasma polymerization, in agriculture, we can use plasma to for to generate natural fertilization, energy storage by the degradation of the hydrocarbonates and electrolysis of the water, in nanotechnology, in the medicine, we can apply plasma to treatment of skin disease, dental cavities, cancer treatment, and its sterilization, bacterial killing. And so uh, here, uh, uh, the no thermoplasma reactor in operation. In this, in this experiment, we are, we are, we are turning frequency up uh, from 30 until 1000 Hertz. And we can see the formation of the streamer. And the streamer is a electrical channel. And we can see that uh, when we increase the frequency applied to the system, we increase also the presence of these streamers. And when the streamer reaches the water surface, the, the streamer is scattering for the all surface. And the region of the, the, ki the kind of geometry is the corona discharge. So the first part of my work, I studied the degradation of intercarmine dye. For that, we developed a power supply pulse DC with high frequency. From that, we, the electrical characterization was done using an oscilloscopic equipment. The reactive species were determined, were identified in the gas phase using optical emission spectroscopy. 
In the liquid phase, we determine nit nitrite and nitrate using capillary electrophoresis. In hydrogen peroxide, we use uh, UVV analysis. Finally, the degradation reaction was accompanied using UVV analysis, and the byproducts were identified using UPLC MS analysis. And the, P the post discharge effect was elucidated using UVV analysis. So the electrical characterization. So we use a uh, oscilloscopic equipment, and then uh, the current and voltage was were measured. Uh, so it helped us to to know the breakdown voltage necessary to for no thermoplasma discharge. The breakdown voltage depends of some parameters of the gas, as the uh, energy ionization electronegativity, but mainly depends of the dielectric constant of the each gas. So we increase the, the voltage applied to the system and when the voltage necessary to for no thermoplasma is reached, the current increases abruptly. So the no thermoplasma is formed. To argon uh, was necessary 6.6 .6 kilovolts to form no thermoplasma. To oxygen was necessary 11.3, and finally to form nitrogen was necessary 14.6 kilovolts. Uh, it occurred because the dielectric constant for nitrogen is greater than the other gases working. Besides that, the argon in the, no, in the argon no thermoplasma will have the formation of cationic argon uh, that guarant, guarantees to argon no thermoplasma a better sustainability discharge. And after that, we, we studied the waveforms. So for this experiment, initial, the power supply was turned off. So we did see the formation of the energy pulses. Uh, after the frequency, uh, the power supply was turned on. But here in this moment, we don't have a uh, current and voltage enough to form no thermoplasma, so a wide energy pulse was observed, due with a greater dielectric constant of the medium, resulting from the uh, slower process for this energy dissipation. And after, when the breakdown voltage is reached for no thermoplasma, we can see the formation of a narrow energy pulses, uh, from it due to the low impedance preferential path when the all energy flows in a short period of time. So here in this moment, we have the no thermoplasma formation. And the reactive species uh, were identified using uh, optical emission spectroscopy. For this experiment, we build a quartz reactor uh, like the original in a support to put the reactor in the probe. The probe was allocated vertical to the discharge zone. And the measure was done, uh, changed the frequency applied to the system. And he, here we can see the results. Uh, for all no thermoplasma, the hydroxy radical were identified and also the hydrogen alpha. Besides that, the specific uh, reactive species were identified to each gas. To oxygen and thermoplasma, the oxygen atom were identified. To nitrogen, the uh, ensemble of nitrogen reactive species were identified. Also, the oxygen nitric. And the nitrogen in the argon and thermoplasma, the argon species were also identified. So, this species here, K, okay, formed in the interface, gas interface can migrate migrate to the liquid phase by diffusion process and changing the initial characteristics of the liquid, as for example, the PAG conductivity and oxidation redox potential. Do it the anionic oxi oxidative species and acid species. So uh, the profile was quite similar for the out no thermoplasma when we can see the decrease of PAG during the all treatment and increase of conductivity and oxidation with oxidation. 
and the values was quite similar between the argon and oxygen thermoplasma. But when when we work with nitrogen thermoplasma, the values was uh, more significant. Do the formation of uh, um, nitrogen acid species. Uh, from that, we studied the post discharge effect. So in this experiment, uh, firstly, the conventional thermoplasma treatment, the power supply was turned off during the old treatment, and the analysis was done at the same day. In the post discharge treatment, the power supply was turned off just for a few minutes. After that, the power supply was turned off, and the analysis was done after 24 hours. This experiment allows us to understand the secondary species stability. Once the secondary, they are formed from the primary species that have a short lifetime and need to be constantly formed by the discharge, uh, no thermoplasma discharge. While uh, the secondary species, they are formed by the primary, but they need to, they don't need to be uh, maintained by the no thermoplasma discharge. Uh, keeping contact for more time with the target molecule. Besides that, the secondary species has uh, some pro interesting properties, as for example, antibacterial properties. So as a result, we so have here, uh, when we use oxygen and thermoplasma, uh, the degradation using no thermoplasma conventional treatment was better when compared to the post-discharge effect uh, in both the reaction, the main species responsible for the, this called the degradation is the ozone. However, when you use the conventional treatment, we have ozone and other reactive species that contribute with the degradation of the anticocarmine. And while in post discharge effect, the, the main species responsible for this degradation is the ozone, just the ozone. An interesting result was observed when you use nitrogen in no thermoplasma. When you use the conventional treatment in this kind of gas, we observe uh, the initial in the first 15 minutes, the 15 minutes, the induction period. In this moment, we don't have a uh, reactive species enough to, to degrade uh, the, the intracarmine dye. Just only after 15 minutes, uh, we are able to degrade this target molecule. But in the post-discharge effect, uh, we don't observe this uh, induction period because since the beginning of the reaction, we have a reactive species enough to start a degradation reaction. And the main species responsible for the post-discharge effect in this kind of plasma is the peroxin nitrate. Peroxin nitrate is important in, in the in, in post-discharge effect due to a high uh, potential oxidation at uh, 2.14 uh, volts, helping into in the degradation of the intracarmine dye. And finally, the degradation reaction was accompanied by UVV analysis. And here you can see the difference be, between the colors uh, initial without no thermoplasma treatment in after the, the treatment. And uh, from the, the degradation reaction, we propose a fragmentation hold for the, uh, um, this reaction. And uh, here we can see the, the fragmentation hold. So when the intercarmine dye react with the no thermoplasma species, of course, the homolytic cleavage of the molecule, originating the sulfonate isatin. The sulfonate isatin is the main byproduct formed in the degradation of the endocarmine. And after that, basically, we identify three different routes of the de degradation, the hydroxylation, the hydration, and the desulfonation reaction. The desulfonation reaction gives us the isatin molecule. The isatin molecule is an important molecule in organic synthesis because it, its derivatives have, have a, a bioactivity activity, uh, effects, as for example, anti cancer, anti tuberculosis, anti inflammatory. 
uh, antiviral properties. And so uh, the second part of my work was developed at the University of Studio of Padova, Italy, under the supervision of Professor Cristina Paradisi and Esther Marotta. And here we use air as working gas to study the synergism reaction. For this study, we, we apply the persulfate molecule activated by no thermoplasma. When the persulfate uh, is activated, uh, it produces a sulfate radical. The sulfate radical is an important molecule uh, species formed in the rational environment due to a uh, high potential oxidation, 2.6 volts. Beside that, the sulfate radical uh, is a source of hydroxy radical in the environment, improving the degradation reaction. For this study, we, we chose the pharmacos uh, hydrochlorothiazid, atenolol, amoxicillin in the herbicide alachlor, alachlor to study the degradation reaction, apply just no thermoplasma in the hybrid system, persulfato activated by no thermoplasma. For that, we apply a power supply, supply DC to study the synergism reaction. So the hydroxy radical was um, Identified in quantifying solution uh, by flow metric uh, equipment. And the degradation was accompanied using LC UVV analysis. And the byproducts were identified using uh, LC MS MS analysis. Uh, so the synergism rational was elucidated by this equation. And if it was more than one, it means that the synergism reaction occurred. And here just an example of the, the proposed fragmentation hold. Here we have the isatin treated with the no thermoplasma in the left. And in compared to amoxicillin treated with the hybrid system, we can see that the byproduct was quite similar between that. But when we apply the hybrid system, we are able, able to identify smaller molecules. And the, in the synergism reaction, uh, for the hydrochlorothiazide, we don't observe this phenomenon, but to allochlor uh, occurs an increase of uh, 40%, to amoxicillin treated with the hybrid system, 15%, and to atenolol, 16%. And uh, the overview of this work, I would say that uh, no thermoplasma is a part in the degradation of emergent contaminants in water. The working gas is the most important parameter in the formation of the reactive species. Why they capable of complaining uh, with other oxidized agents and catalytic reagents improve the degradation reaction? and the possibility to infinite configurations of reactor sources and electrodes guaranteed to no thermoplasma applications in the most several areas. And the no thermoplasma is a green method of treatment. So the first part of my was published in the Chemosphere Journal. In common paper, we, ha we have a degradation of emergent organic pollutants in water in the hybrid system of persulfate no thermoplasma and self synergetic effect in the degradation of sulfonated dyes using no thermoplasma. In the, in the perspective of futures, I would say that uh, using uh, the hybrid system to degrade other compounds and apply a study of the other reagent. Uh, re reagent to with a synergism effect as PMS, for example. And I think that science and governing uh, should uh, invest more in the green methods to as the plasma technology to treatment. And is that. Muito obrigada. <laughs> Thank you, Ana, for Thank this you. very interesting uh, presentation. So, mm -hmm. someone wants to do any question? Não sei se foi claro o suficiente. 
Eu tentei. É um tema bem mais, é um tema bem diferente do que nós geralmente temos aqui, mas uhum. uh, sem dúvida foi interessante, foi muito interessante. Nick, it's you? Sorry, I missed I'm... the beginning. Um, so maybe, maybe you've already answered this. Actually, I think it's weird. I think it's the first time I've seen your face. Uh, so in like uh, four months. But anyway, um, I was wondering what is um, like, is there like a volume limit? What, how big a volume can you treat using your technique? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in in this study, I I treat a uh, hundred t ml of uh, of a uh, solution, but we can the nutrient plasma easy to scale to industrial uh, applications. Depending uh, always depend of the geometry of the reactor. And are you are you forced to to use uh, argon, or can you use other other gas? Yes, you can use argon or use uh, other gas. Depending of the, is interesting because we can manipulate the system by the using the different gases. So depending of the application that you want to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Helena, sim, Olá. Posso... sim professor. Um... Ana, muito obrigado pela tua apresentação. Obviamente uhum. que parece que é muito diferente daquilo que a gente faz por aqui, mas na verdade é muito complementar em muitos aspectos do que a gente faz por aqui. Uhum. Basta às vezes nós mencionarmos a possibilidade de depois tratar o efluente de uma maneira ou de outra e não é a primeira vez que é reviews que a gente faz, a gente aborda este tipo de eh, técnica para fazer tratamento de efluentes contaminados, seja com líquidos iónicos, seja com solventes eutéticos, seja com alguns dos produtos com que a gente tem estado a trabalhar. Portanto, é uhum. bom ter alguém a mostrar-nos como é que isso se faz. Eh, e a outra questão que eu tenho quase que nem é para ti, quase que é para a Helena e para o Nicolá, porque eh, isto são processos de oxidação avançados e eles interessam-se uh -huh. muito. Nicolá, should I speak in English? Uh, no, 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 go for it. Processos de oxidação avançados são muito relevantes para aquilo que eles fazem, eles vocês fazem, uma vez que tu também estás a trabalhar com os metais. Era interessante, eu lembro da Helena e do Nicolá terem montado um sistema com ozono para fazer a oxidação de alguns dos metais. Um, o que tu mostras aqui é uh, como é que a gente pode, se calhar, pensar num processo destes, não apenas na perspectiva de degradar compostos orgânicos que estão presentes num efluente, mas fazer a dissolução de metais através destes processos de oxidação avançada, ou seja, aplicá-los numa outra perspectiva mais relacionada com aquilo que a gente está aqui a fazer. Porque aquilo que tu mostraste não era simplesmente colocar ao sono, como a gente fazia, a uhum. para uma série de outras coisas. Uhum. Tu é tu que estás a trabalhar nisto, tu, Helena, Nicolás, que maneira uhum. que a gente poderia pensar em integrar abordagens deste tipo na lixiviação ou na pós-lixiviação dos metais para obter um determinado. Uh, estado oxidativo uhum. que nos convém uhum. para aumentar a dissolução. Uhum. Sim. É, na verdade, eu tenho pensado nisso, de como utilizar o, o meu conhecimento que eu tive lá na, na, no Brasil com o trabalho aqui, porque tá, eu me senti também um pouco mais à vontade e tudo mais, e eu acho que, eu acho que realmente é possível de conseguir, tentar conciliar as duas coisas. Até porque acho interessante, porque no, quando a gente, por exemplo, aplicou plasma ali, 
tu forma um, um ambiente bastante ácido e sem a necessidade de, de, de adicionar reagentes químicos e tudo mais. O próprio ambiente racional já proporciona isso para a gente. Acho que seria interessante tentar pensar em, em, em juntar é, o, as duas coisas. Assim. Acho que vale a pena de tentar pensar nisso também. Any comment on this, Nicola? Uh, yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure as to um, there's a problem a lot of time with uh, oxidation, especially in in uh, aqueous solutions or even even worse in eutectics. In this case, is the chlorinated byproducts, which can be often more carcinogenic than the actual um, things you're trying to get removed. So it will depend on the solution and on the counter ion specifically, but um, especially for sulfates, I can see this being a, a, a potential. So yeah, absolutely. It will be quite good to, to use Anna's very strange knowledge. I have no <laughs> <idea>. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Mais alguém quer colocar questões? Não? Bom, Ana, muito obrigada pela tua muito apresentação obrigada. e por obrigada nos teres trazido aqui. <risos> obrigada a todos. Um bom resto. Muito obrigada. Muito obrigada a todos. Muito obrigada, obrigada. Ana. Muito obrigada a todos vocês. Tchau. Obrigada. Bom fim de semana. Bom final de semana. <risos>